you. Governor Neil Abercrombie will lay out his plan to stabilize Hawaii's economy today in his second State of the State address. A top priority is expected to be how the state will deal with a revised economic forecast that came out earlier this month. The Council on Revenues trimmed down growth estimates to 11.5 percent, meaning lawmakers would have $130 million less to work with this year. Now, the governor is also expected to address the ongoing labor dispute with the teachers' union. Last week's rejection of a six-year contract deal adds to concerns that the state could lose $75 million in race to the top federal grant money. And we continue our coverage now with more on what we can expect with the governor's speech today. And joining us live is Blake Oshiro. He is the governor's deputy chief of staff. Good morning. Good morning. Thank Michelle. you so much for joining us. Oh, thanks for having us. So let's take a look at the state of the state. Mm -hmm. and, and last year's state of the state was, was almost somber in its tone. You know, the governor talked about how the canoe would almost turn over or capsize. Mm -hmm. uh, given this year's economy, you know, things are starting to improve. Uh, how would you expect the tone to be this year? It's really going to be about turning the corner. We have seen slow and steady progress, and so we are optimistic, but we're still cautious. And so that's really going to be the overall tone throughout his speech. You know, the Council on Revenues revised its economic forecast, and um, how would that impact the governor's uh, capital improvements projects that he wants to put money into? Will he be able to afford them? You know, luckily, we were able to save around $86 million through various mechanisms last year, and so that savings really, really helped offset that $130 million that the Council of Revenue projections kind of gave us a shortfall for. So overall, our budget plan is still balanced. We still are looking towards having some really aggressive capital improvement and construction projects, because mm -hmm. we really think that's important to make sure that we have jobs out there in the marketplace. Let's talk about uh, the ongoing negotiations with the teachers union and this $75 million that is mm -hmm. at risk mm -hmm. now. Will the governor specifically address this problem now with the Race to the Top grant? Yeah, definitely. You know, I think we were hoping that we could have crossed the finish line with HSTA together collaboratively, but it now appears that the governor is going to have to actually maybe pull them along to get to that race to the top. We have in our back pocket a number of administrative management and even possible legislative tools that we'll be looking at in the next coming months. Mm -hmm. Now, the governor, uh, most of his top advisors are new. They've all come on board after, uh, you know, several people had left from the uh, chief of staff, deputy chief of staff, and also the communications chief. How is the administration's approach different now with new people on board such as yourself? You know, I think last session it was really, really difficult. It was a hard time really financially. People were really under the weather. But this time around, now that things look a lot more optimistic, our goal is to increase communications, bring the legislature more into the loop in decision making, because that's where they truly belong, and making sure that they understand when they implement a policy or they pass a policy, the administration is really going to grab onto it and try and administer it and implement it as well as mm -hmm. possible. And uh, as several years as a lawmaker, you'll be using your ties as well? Yeah, that's my goal. I was brought on to try and increase communications help with the relationship. So between myself and the rest of the people on the governor's team, I really think that's one of our goals in the next four months is to make sure that we work very collaboratively with the House and the Senate to make sure that all of our goals unilaterally meet at the end of session. All right. Blake Oshiro, Deputy Chief of Staff for the Governor, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks so much we for really having appreciate me this morning. It. And KITV4 will have live coverage of the governor's address to a joint session of the state legislature later this morning. You can tune in on air and online at KITV.com starting at 10 a.m. to hear what the governor has to say. And then tomorrow morning, Governor Abercrombie will be with us in studio. You can tune in around the same time to hear from the man himself and how he plans to accomplish the goals laid out today. Now for reaction, let's turn to CivilBeat.com editor John Temple with some insight into today's State of the State address. Good morning, John. Good morning. Well, you just heard from Blake Oshiro, the governor's deputy chief of staff, and he said that the governor will address the teachers' issue. What are you hearing in terms of these negotiations? Well, I think that's fascinating because the governor indicated at his press conference on Friday that there were administrative tools uh, available to him, and clearly that's true when it comes to evaluations. But one of the big issues on the table is performance pay. And I don't believe a governor um, can negotiate performance pay with himself. That's going to ultimately have to happen with teachers. 
And really, the teachers issue is a there's a kind of a crisis of confidence there that the, there's a lack of trust between the teachers and the state. And I'm not sure that uh, just imposing measures is going to be the clearest way to build confidence. And there's also an issue between the teachers and their own union, right? There really is. I mean, clearly, the union's board unanimously recommended that contract, and yet it was it was turned down two to one by the membership the first time in that union's history. So there's a disconnect between the leadership of the union and the members of the union. Well, John, I know that Civil Beat will be covering today's State of the State Address, so we look forward to reading those articles on CivilBeat.com. John Temple, editor, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Thank you. And stick around. We've got more news ahead on KITV 5.